guys, welcome to a new video lesson on grammar. Have you ever wondered why English is one of the most important global languages? Yeah, in fact, it is imperative to learn English and to know how to speak and communicate in English because it is an inevitable mode of interaction, transactions and documentation. The language has contributed significantly in bringing people and their cultures closer in international business community, across national and international borders, education and career, games and sports, information technology and the internet, the cyberspace, world media and entertainment, cinemas, cartoons, news and other media productions. Everything. For everything, English is absolutely the superhighway to information in today's world. While the vocabulary and pronunciation can be a bit difficult to learn, English grammar is easier compared to other European languages. And we have already been into it in the previous video lessons. We had a detailed and elaborate session on a couple of parts of speech, nouns, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, and adjectives. Yes, the next one in series is a category of tiny particles. What are they? Prepositions. Well, prepositions are tiny particles that connect. Now we have a uh, look at this example. Linking like a hook and I, in and out and for and by, bird in nest and rose on tree, gifts for you and sit by me. See the colored words, the red colored words? They connect, they tell you the position, location of nouns, pronouns and other objects in a sentence. Prepositions, they are a class of words used to express spatial, the space, the position, where it is, or the temporal relations, the time, the position of the things, persons and matters in a sentence. For example, of prepositions, of, for, in, on, to, about, across, with, after, etc. There are two types of prepositions, a simple prepositions and compound. You can see here, what do you mean by a simple preposition? It's a one word preposition, for example, of, for, in, to, etc. Sometimes a preposition can also come in a two word or three word combination, which is called a compound preposition. A compound preposition functions as a single preposition. It consists of two words, two particles or two elements such as according to, because of, different from, due to, and instead of. So here you can see it's a combination of two particles, because of, different from. There goes compound prepositions with two elements. And then again, you have examples of three word compound prepositions. For example, as far as, in addition to, in front of, and in spite of. All right, guys, you have here a huge list of prepositions that you may learn and use in your discourses when you speak as well as write. Discourses means it's speech or writing. Now, we move on to the next class of words called interjunctions. What is an interjunction? An interjunction is a word or a phrase that expresses emotion but has no grammatical relation to other words in the given sentence. An interjunction is a word or expression that occurs as an utterance on its own and expresses a spontaneous feeling or reaction. For example, you're calling somebody by, hey, or you're surprised, oh my, goodness gracious, my goodness. And if you happen to see or hear something amazing, you utter, wow. When you drop something accidentally, you give out an oops or ouch. 
they go into junctions. It is a diverse category encompassing many different parts of speech such as exclamations, curses, greetings, response particles, hesitation markers and other words. All right, now here are the next set of words, the conjunctions. Now what do they do? In grammar, the conjunction is a part of speech that connects words, phrases or clauses that are called conjuncts of the conjunctions. They connect words, phrases or clauses. We will have uh, volumes to talk on about phrases and clauses in the upcoming video lessons. For example, but, for, so, although, even though, hereafter, etc. Now we do have three types of conjunctions, namely coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions, and correlative conjunctions. We shall see what each of these conjunctions does within our discourses in the course of time and we talk about phrases and clauses. Now right now you just keep in your mind three types of uh, conjunctions. Right now take a better look at these conjunctions and I believe you may enjoy remembering the mnemonic acronym FANBOYS where each letter stands for a conjunction FOR, AND, NOR, BUT or yet so. So the first letter of all these conjunctions together form fanboys. So there goes uh, fanboys. It's interesting and easy to remember. Here you go with a big collection of conjunctions that indicates manner, place, time, reason, condition, comparison, concession, and those conjunctions, sometimes they are used as relative pronouns and relative adjectives. So they connect, they connect words, phrases, clauses, and they show you uh, time, place, manner, reason, condition, comparison, etc. A word about correlative conjunctions. They are pairs. They occur in pairs such as neither nor, not only but also. What do they do? What do these pairs do? These conjunctions, they connect to balanced clauses. You have two clauses, two ideas, two matters to say, and you balance them. Uh, balancing clauses, phrases, or words. The two elements that these correlative conjunctions they connect, they are usually similar in length and grammatical structure. You can see here. Look at these examples. The company deals in both hardware and software. Two ideas that the company deals with hardware, at the same time the company deals with software. So these two ideas are balanced, both hardware and software. I'll eat either carrots or peas for dinner. So sometimes I eat carrots, sometimes I eat peas. I do like eating both carrots or peas. So these two ideas together, either or. Natalie likes neither milk nor cream cake. Nadali doesn't like milk, she doesn't like even uh, cream cake. So these two ideas, perfectly balanced. Perfect balance is maintained in all these examples. So there goes uh, correlative conjunctions. Now, we move on to the last category of words. Parts of speech is usually numbered as eight of them. Nouns, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, prepositions, interjections and conjunctions. But we do have one more, an important group, a small group of just three particles, a and the, the articles. What are articles? They are words used to indicate to our listeners a particular person or thing which is being referred to. You're talking about something, your listener is listening to you, perceiving what you're saying or communicating. And you would share with this uh, particular person or a thing or a matter or a concept. For example, when you say a boy, a girl, a bird, a tree, an umbrella, an aeroplane, 
and ice cream, etc. You actually talk about a particular or specific person or thing whom you refer to your listener. Your listener is listening to you and you're referring to a particular person or thing or place or whatever. There are two types of articles, namely the definite article and the indefinite article. And what are they? The, T-H-E. The is called the definite article. Why is it called definite article? It is used when the speaker believes that the listener knows the identity of the noun that he's speaking about. For example, the boy. So you have uh, some boy, a specific in your mind. You're talking about that particular boy. The girl, the girl standing over there. The book, the book which is inside the shelf, not the books uh, lying on the table. The pen, etc. So you have, uh, you know, or you want to convey the identity which book it is, which boy it is, which girl it is. You have a specificity. You are talking about the identity of that particular thing or person or idea. Then comes the indefinite article, a and an. They are used when the speaker believes that the listener does not have to be told about the identity of the referent, any. It may be any, a boy, any boy, a girl, any girl, a book some kind of a book you you don't have to reveal to your listener the li you don't want the listeners to know about that you know you're not supposed to reveal the identity of the referent so here you have plenty of uh, examples here to comprehend the differences between definite and indefinite articles Yes, guys, we have come to an end of parts of speech, almost nine in categories. I would suggest you to have a diligent look at all these examples and practice papers pertaining to each lesson. Here is a beautiful quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson, the American transcendentalist. There it goes. The world is emblematic. Parts of speech are metaphors because the whole of nature is a metaphor of the human mind. The world is uh, full of symbols. Parts of speech, they are also symbols because uh, the whole nature, the whole life, what you see, what you perceive, what you hear, everything is an image, is a symbol of your mind, of your soul. Learning a language is a gradual process, it doesn't happen overnight. Maintain a consistent, passionate and genuine liking and affinity for a language that you are pursuing to learn. Learning grammar is not learning language, but every language becomes more appealing, systematic, acceptable and appropriate with its grammar. Thank you guys, thank you for watching, see you in the next video lesson.